online and we're filming here with nonetheless other than mr dave kalama and i'm just working on a story or an interview with dave or we're just uh for the print magazine for our friends over in germany i'm going to print that all out and transcribe it into german and we were just talking a little bit about how dave was just pioneering about every single sport there is we were talking about how sop came and how he had such a, an enjoyment back in the day and, he, and still do kid, and still do still does and i want to talk a little bit quick bring that that whole conversation back up that we had about a little bit the foiling part because that is really something that everybody's talking about it and we were talking about uh, um, a step into liquid back from 2002 when you Larry and friends were um, foiling and then it didn't catch on and i really liked your answer there well, um, what I was saying was the snowboard boots and the jet ski were the key ingredients to making that possible. And it's kind of like two words you would never find in the same sentence, snowboard boots and jet skis. <laughs> and I think that right there um, limited the number of people and the level of interest uh, that you might see in that sport. Mm -hmm. And so it never really took off like it is now. Um, but nonetheless, it was still just as fun. It just wasn't as easy to get into. Yeah, and, and back then, uh, yeah, it, it looked also, it looked, first I would say it, it kind of looked a little awkward. Yep. Uh, and, but people were like, I still remember watching the movie. Actually, I watched it with my kids not too long ago, you know, because it's a good piece of surf history. Um, and then Sop came along and we were talking about this. And I really, I like to maybe blame SUP for the rise of foil because it gave the people the opportunity to get on a foil easier. Yeah, well, Alex Aguero, the, the main guy that developed the current version of foiling um, was a stand-up paddler himself. So it was only natural that he would try and develop a, a surf foil via a stand-up. You know, yeah. If he was more of a prone guy, it might have come from proning, but he was a stand-up guy. And so that created a very authentic connection between stand-up and foil surfing. Yeah, and then I mean, like, not to speak of, like, I remember those uh, pictures of uh, Kai putting a foil underneath a sub race board. Yep. And everybody was kind of like, uh, and then, and then it, it went so quick, it felt like. It, it, although then on the other hand, thinking if you go on YouTube, there's a video um, from the Motu where Kai pumping back to, for the first time, I guess, from one wave to another. And now this is, this is the standard. Yeah. Um... I mean, I remember the first Kai videos. I'm sure everyone was blown away. It was very uh, sci-fi kind of surfing. You know, it was so different than anything yeah. than most of us had seen, especially in the fact that it was out in the ocean. It wasn't necessarily riding a wave, but just this continual riding for miles yeah. um, hadn't really been seen yeah. like that before. So that was really a cool aspect. And then when you saw him do the two for one, yeah, it was like nobody had seen that before. Crazy. And you are now in developing your own boards. Yep. Um, and we were talking also, and this is another big thing that you can check it out on the website on, on, on other media, um, the flat water part. And we were talking about how people are now learning uh, you know, downwinding is super hard to paddle up on a chop. I mean, like, I, I haven't learned that yet. Uh, I tried it on the flat water there with Jeremy Ricks. If you guys haven't seen that video, you might want to check that out. It's so hard, but the board is really seems to be also a little bit a, a crucial ingredient to create that bounce. Talk to us about a little bit about your boards and, and what, what the development is there, the latest. Well, yeah, flat water foiling and, and paddling up onto a foil is extremely difficult. It takes a lot of energy, a lot of effort and, and skill. It really is a skill within itself. And the equipment plays a very key role in your success. And so I've really been focused on developing boards that get up as easy as possible, whether you're in flat water or downwinding. Um, and so that's why you'll see a lot of the guys at Jeremy's practice using my boards, because at this time they are the easiest boards to get up out of the water, uh, downwinding or flat water for yeah. that matter. Yeah, which is kind of an, a, a last point, as difficult as this part is, and this is probably, in my opinion, the most difficult is that. Yep. But that's ironically where I feel like there's the highest potential in a broader application, because why? Because it's kind of like SOP, because you can do it in any 
kind of water. Just need water. So we need guys like you who can show us the way uh, with the right board, guys like Jeremy and, and doing a technique and maybe maybe at some point pioneer like a first kind of like an event, maybe showcase a, f a couple of good guys. And, and how about having like, wouldn't you guys love like a flat water sub pump foil race, whether if it's a dock start or with a pedal start, but wouldn't that be kind of an interesting thing? Having guys on counterpart buoy courses? It's gonna happen. I mean, there's, there's no question it's gonna happen. It's more a question of when, Yeah. but you're absolutely right. Okay. That, that's a huge potential. Now, let me put one crazy last idea in your head that we haven't <laughs> talked about it yet. I have a vision in my head. I'm thinking about a ramp that is as tall as this building behind you. It goes down like you know, like like the the, the soup, like the, the big air contest in skateboarding. Yep. But it has a slit in the middle, and there's a guy on a board with a foil hanging through. Yep. Actually, there's two guys. They're sliding down that ramp into a water, coming down at say 20, 25 miles an hour. Yeah. And well, I mean, the windsurfers have already done it. Yes, exactly. The windsurfer. I've done already it. had. I didn't think of 20 miles an hour, but I have already had that vision of uh, a sliding start. Why don't we see this yet? Why has nobody done this? Why? What, we need to go out in somebody's backyard and actually build it ourselves. I, I, I like. want to say someone has. I, I could have sworn either someone told me or I saw it on YouTube. Um, You're right. There was there was a ramp in some uh, Eastern European city. Something they like had that, in, yeah. In a wake, sir, in a wake, in a wake, uh, wake uh, board park. Right. So yes. it, it's, it's going to happen. It must happen. As the sport grows, everything's on the table. I think that would be the coolest. Like two guys, like in a ski gate, you know, with yep. a little with a little gate, come down, boom, put it in, put it in front of an audience, you know. Like I mean, to me, that just sounds like oh, great. Race out around the buoy, come back. You can tell who won. It, it's easy. Yeah. It's quick. Exciting. Two man heat. So there is still so much future to come oh, in this absolutely. sport. And and it's so stoked that like after SOP, and we we had our video uh, or our interview like 11 years ago. And here we are with SOP, and here we are again, and who knows what the next 10 years bring. I'm gonna be very excited about it. Me too. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.